And I'd just like to take the opportunity to congratulate both ministers on their appointment and to very genuinely wish you well. You have a huge task of work ahead of you and we certainly look forward to both working with you and to holding you to account in relation to the many challenges on the way. Minister, uh, you said that you wanted to avoid rhetoric and spreading fear in relation to this debate. And while I accept the point you made, and I want to acknowledge that Priory Hall, Longboat Quay and Beacon Court are three schemes that certainly have captured national attention over the last number of years, and thankfully they have never had a fire. I want to talk to you this evening about where we did have a fire in Newbridge, where six houses were absolutely gutted within 35 minutes. And on the 31st of March 2015, just over two years ago, the six houses that I mentioned in Millfield Manor Estate in Newbridge, six of a complex of 90 houses, burned to the ground after flames spread rapidly from a fire that was started in one of those houses. It transpired that there were no proper fire barriers between the houses. There was improper and badly constructed internal walls. And this terrace of two-storey homes, not multi-storey homes, was ablaze within 20 minutes and the houses were absolutely gutted to the ground in 35 minutes and I have a photograph of it here. Thankfully this happened during the day and there was only one resident present in the six houses. If this had been during the night I think it would have been a very different state of affairs. In these different blocks of six houses, between 20 and 35 residents live in each. And it's almost certain that if this was during the night, that very sadly people would have died. And the present homeowners live with that fear every single day. So six households fled with their lives and only with clothes on their back. Not a scrap of clothing, not a stick of furniture, not a family photograph, not a children's toy survived this inferno. And all of their families' hopes and dreams went up in the flames, which I witnessed myself. Their lives, and indeed not only the lives of the six families, but the lives of all the residents living in Millfield changed forever. Every property owner in Millfield is an innocent party. Having bought a property in good faith, relying on the provided certification and the processes that they believe existed in the associated areas of planning and of inspection. And I do have to say that Newbridge, as a sign of the wonderful community, community that it is, responded in a hugely compassionate way that night and in the days and weeks that followed. Our local hotel, Hotel Cadine, immediately provided emergency accommodation for the families and the community immediately got together and responded with clothes, toiletries, finance and indeed with comfort. Since then, on many occasions, and at many meetings, I have sat with grown men that have cried, with women who held their children close and were afraid to bring them home to their homes, trapped in negative equity, not feeling safe and secure and not being able to sleep at night. This fire continues to cause grave concern and huge stress. And there are significant legacy issues for the remaining inhabitants whose houses and apartments are now under serious question as to their safety compliance standards. The various statutory bodies have offered no comfort, no guidance to the remaining house owners. And they have many questions. And some of these questions are, is it safe to continue living in these houses or apartments? And it's not. How are our insurance impacted by the perception that the structures were non-compliant with fire regulations and many cannot get insurance cover now? What recourse do we have to the planning authorities? And of course there's none. What responsibility does national government have? And to date there has been none. What sanctions are open against the developer and the management company, the developer now in NAMA who just took shortcuts to make a quick buck and there have been none? What can be done to restore equity in these now houses that are virtually unsellable since the fire? 
and of course nothing has happened in relation to that. I don't think I've ever felt so frustrated or helpless when I have had to tell my constituents living there that there, has been, that there are no financial or practical assistance in installing life-saving fire barriers. They have been told that this work could cost approximately €35,000, which is simply unaffordable for them. They are struggling to meet their mortgage, mortgages as it is. So basically, those living there have been told that there is no funding available to bring the properties up to fire safety standards. They are unable to sell the properties or get in home insurance as they are fire risk houses. And I, I do appreciate that you're only in this position a few days, Minister, but the previous Minister, Minister Coveney, has had a report sitting on his desk for 15 months in relation to Millfield Manor. That report needs to be released and a surveyor needs to be appointed to quantify the works required on a sample block of six homes within Millfield Manor and the best way to proceed. The residents of Millfield Manor contacted me again in the last few days after the recent horrific and tragic fire in Grenfell Tower and again can I offer my deepest sympathies to all involved, highlighting how unsafe they feel in their homes and their frustration with our failed building inspection systems. The whole area of building standards must be reformed and I commend Deputy Martin for bringing this forward to the House as the building control regulations are inadequate and protect neither homeowners nor subsequent home purchasers against negligent developers. It is incredible that despite numerous high profile building failures there have been no sanctions against architects or surveyors for compl complaints in the last six years. It is clear that self-regulation of design and construction standards simply does not work and it is necessary for independent state authorities to check every new development to ensure they are compliant with building control regulations and, regulations and this is something that we have in our own party amendment. We are all aware of the current housing shortage but our, in our rush to build new homes safety must be paramount and grossly defective building standards must be a thing of the past. The fire in Millfield Newbridge has shown the consequences of failure to meet minimum compliance standards. The fear experienced by Millfield residents and homeowners on a daily basis is a legacy that cannot be ignored. We talk about safe and secure houses. We must make that happen. My party will be bringing forward a different bill to, de to deal with the issue of non-compliance with fire safety and other building regs. And I leave the last words to the committee that has been formed in relation to Millfield Manor. This is a life and death issue within our community and we have encountered serious obstacles in the last two years in remedying construction failures due to lack of clarity on standards and the costs associated with such works. Ministers, I appeal to you to do something radical in relation to Millfield and to support this motion with our amendment. Thank you and I hand over to Deputy Cowan.